Now, this is very trendy. Nowadays, we go towards an era in which we try to be as minimal invasive as possible in super obvious approach. When a typical example in which you can minimize the bone resection, uh, this would be almost the equivalent of unifrontal trans uh, subfrontal. But the only thing, the, the bone dissection is very minimal. If that allows you to be lateral to the superobular notch, and that means that you, you will avoid entering the frontal sinus in most of the cases. So that eliminates the brain retraction, I mean, minimize brain retraction, improve visualization, so you have minimize, uh, minimization of tissue trauma and improve cosmesis. Um, the racraniotomy requires only one burrow which is a very strategically placed, and I don't know how familiar you are with this one, but I'm going to go through this uh, most strategic um, burrow when we talk about the titanium approach. So reduce the post-operative scarring and preserve cosmesis, and also minimize brain infraction. I always go emphasize over and over, because that's why I teach my fellow as a resident to use the spatula the least they can. And sometimes I, in my lab, I have fellows in Svesi and work for a month and a half only extra dura because I want to, them to really understand the concept of working extra dura and preparing corridors. Because if they really manage to pre um, um, preparing corridors, they, they will be very successful in minimizing brain attraction when they open the dura. So with the supraorbital, which is a minimal bone opening, without extending as much as unifrontal, you can have access to the entire um, not the entire, but the, most of the anterior uh, skull base, supracellar region, the proximal sylvian fissure, the circular willis, the anterior circular willis, basal frontal temporal lobes, and the upper ventral midbrain. So there is some modification you can apply. Technically, it's going to be a little bit more challenging than uh, through a terminal approach because the opening is a little smaller. Um, but the contraindication would be patient with a large frontal sinus, of course, because in that case, in that case I would rather do a, a bigger approach because you, you, you lose one of the advantages of doing such a minimal opening. Um, I don't want to go too much into technical aspects, so I go very briefly. The incision is inside the eyebrow, as you can see, and then I can do, in this case, when I go through the muscle and I, go a, uh, I do a so-called pericranial flap, basically I incise the periosteum and I reflect the periosteum inferiorly. And then finally, one side effect, as you can see in here, the periosteum inferiorly, and now I can do the craniotomy. It's a minimal craniotomy starting from the just posterior to the zygomatical frontal suture. I go very basal and stay lateral to supraorbital notch. There's no need to violate the supraorbital notch, supraorbital nerve, no need to violate the frontal sinus in the majority of cases. And you can see it's only two and a half centimeters above, and that allows me to go very flush with the, with the, with the roof of the orbit. I, in some time, sometimes, I mean, actually, many times, I, I take the super obvious rim because that allows me to be even more basal and I to, to apply a minimal brain attraction. As you can see, once I open the dura, usually I do the dura flap inferiorly and I go along the opening basal and I can get a, I can get really beautiful exposure. You can see this nice, nice view of the, the edge of the craniotomy starting from the McCarthy burrow which is that just behind the zygomatical frontal suture. And with a craniotome, I can take the suprobial rim together with the bone flap all together, and I can reconstruct properly with the cranial plates. And look at that degree of exposure. Although the opening is very small, but you have a nice angle, particularly on the, the entire uh, unilateral anterior cranial fossa, some of the, the bilateral cranial fossa, but most of the sub, the cell and pericellar region. So usually I see, the limit, the cutoff of this approach as far as exposure in the paracellar area is the uh, carotid bifurcation. So everything lat lateral to the carotid bifurcation, as you can see in here, particularly MCA, I would strongly, I would suggest. So although you can do eventually push a limit, but for MCA, I would definitely use a pterion approach, no issue probably, there is no need. So everything lateral to the carotid bifurcation, I won't use the supraorbital. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.